Over the weekend, billionaire Richard Branson ventured to the upper reaches of the atmosphere in his private spacecraft and then returned safely to Earth. Trim complete. Unity is pointed directly up and heading to space. Things are looking great. We are 25 seconds into the burn now, approaching Mach 2. The British entrepreneur flew on his own Virgin Galactic rocket plane. The company has been developing the spacecraft for 17 years. He took off with a small crew from a runway in New Mexico and climbed about 85 kilometers above the Earth. The flight was briefly in zero gravity. He described the flight as the start of a new age of space tourism. My next guest has a ticket for one of those tourist flights on the Virgin Galactic. Judy Anderson is a retired science professor from Winnipeg, and she bought her ticket over 10 years ago. Judy, welcome to The Rundown. Hi, thanks, Carol. What prompted you to buy that ticket to space? You know, I've always wanted to go into space since uh, Yuri Gagarin went up, and um, it just is a dream come true. It got reinforced when there were moon launches and then shuttle launches and the recent stuff with uh, SpaceX and um, Virgin Galactic have reinforced that dream to go be weightless. That's cool. And to look down on the earth and see how marvelous it is and look at all the geography and the water and the land and the mountains and the clouds, um, just can't wait. You have long harbored these ambitions to be an astronaut. Yeah, really a long time. Um, I don't even remember. I think Yuri Gagarin and I was still in grade school. Um, <laughs> you know, we used to look through the telescope of the planets and think about what was going on up there. Yeah, it, it, it's a bit of a leap of faith, though, to buy a ticket. First of all, how much was the ticket? Tell us that. So everybody knows now it was 200,000 US, which is a lot. Um, but we didn't put all that money on the table. I think we sent in $20,000 and signed up. So we could actually get 95% of that back if it didn't go forward. Right. Because it was, it was an unknown, would it happen? Well, that's, that's the thing. And that's the point I'm making. So $200,000, the price of the ticket for an individual. But on top of that, you'd be going in a way that very few people have been there before. I mean, this is, this is relatively untested. What a leap of faith. Oh, well, you got to take a leap sometime in life. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it seemed like a risk that it would happen, for sure. Um, I didn't want to be number two going up, uh, to be honest, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> or even maybe number 10. Uh, I, my number is 623. So by the time I go up, they will either have abandoned ship or I'll go fine. Yeah. When, when do you think 623 will be called? Uh, I'd like to say I knew, but I have no idea. I'm, I'm guessing a couple of years. How, how do you prepare yourself for something like this? Well, I'm trying to keep healthy and fit and uh, mentally prepared. I know there's no requirement that I get trained on a centrifuge or keep my weight at a certain level, uh, but they fitted the spacesuit to me and... Um, and I did go get training on the centrifuge in Pittsburgh, at the NASTAR facility. That was a fantastic experience also, just to feel the G-forces and know what to expect that way. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so you've been fitted for this spacesuit. What was that like? Well, all you did was take measurements, oh. you know. Yeah. All right. Nothing... Nothing personal tailoring. <laughs> I see, I see. Uh, what was it like, the impact on you, to see the first one happen yesterday with Branson himself on board? Yeah, that was a pretty pretty exciting morning. Uh, it didn't start out exciting, but uh, we had to fiddle with the Internet and finally got three different screens with different news feeds up. Um, and then it, it built for sure, gradually, and when the launch happened and you could... You just imagine feeling that the bottom drops out of your life when they drop the rocket and then it takes off, boom, and then watching the altitude climbing. It was really exciting. And the feed from inside the capsule didn't work very well for Virgin, but um, they 
have sent video since then of people weightless in the cabin and that's that looks awesome looks like a lot of fun all really. right well judy i hope you get to experience it soon thank you for joining us today ah uh, you're welcome judy anderson is a retired science professor in winnipeg and she has a ticket to go to space